Hi, my name's Cornelia. My name is Tiffany. My name is Hilda. Hi, I'm Marantia. My name is Kyle Sexton. Hi, I'm Sunday, and this is Black in Japan. This is definitely the number one most asked question on my channel. What is it like being black in Japan? And because it's such an important topic, I wanted to make sure I covered it properly. So in this video, you're gonna be hearing from five amazing, completely different individuals sharing their take on this question. I wanted to make this video to show others what it's like being black in Japan, but I didn't wanna just show my side because there are many different factors that contribute to your experience. Like your age, are you in the countryside? Are you in the city? And in my opinion, your job has the biggest biggest impact on your experience here in Japan. I mean, like, think about it. It's where you're gonna be for more than half of your time here, like a nine to five, usually ain't even nine to five. It's like nine to seven could be longer. I wanted you guys to hear from people with as many different jobs as possible. Also, as an entrepreneur, I really wanted to focus on the business aspect of coming to Japan, like what actual things you can do here. Also, the tips and information in this video are for everyone, regardless of your skin color. It's just, in my opinion, so many things in life tend to be 10 times harder when you're black, including YouTube, believe it or not. <laughs> so if you liked the video and you get anything out of it, it would really mean a lot to me if you can support by hitting the like button. But yeah, I wanted to make a video showing my people that we can do anything. And if we can do it, you can too. Hi, my name's Cornelia. That was so fake. Hi, my name's Cornelia and I'm from the UK and I live here in Yokohama. What I do here is teach English, but I also make YouTube video content around Japan. Hi, my name is Tiffany Rachel. I'm 24 years old. I have been in Japan for a very long time. I was born in Japan, lived in Ibaraki for a little bit, moved to America for six years, now back in Tokyo, working at a social media creative agency here in Tokyo. My name is Kyle Sexton. I'm from York, Pennsylvania. I've been in Tokyo for all of my time, 37 years. Not even seen Kansai yet, but I lived in Manhattan, so I like big cities. I love Tokyo. I have two sons and two daughters. Oh, wow! You got a big family! Nice! Hi, I'm Marentia. I do YouTube in Japan, and I'm 23 years old. Half Ghanaian, half Japanese. My mom's Japanese, and my dad is from Ghana, but they met in Japan. My name is Hilda Ijoma DK. I am the founder of Ijilala. Ijilala Styles, Ijilala Looks. I'm from Nigeria. I've lived in Japan for about 13 years now, going on 14. I have a family of four. My children were born here in Japan. This is their first home, so it was easy for them to naturalize. Actually, they speak Japanese as well as English, so I haven't had any complaints from school or from them. Besides the regular, oh, kids don't want to play with me. It's like, yeah, don't worry. Uh, oh, it's so typical. Okay, the anime. <laughs> anime. No. Ghana. I feel very comfortable in. Mm. There aren't many laws or rules. Everyone is very welcoming, and it's just a comfortable, friendly environment to be in. But because it is a developing country, there's so many inconveniences, right, that come oh. with living there. For example, like hospitals uh, so many things that you shouldn't have to spend so much time like stressing on you end up doing that in ghana so then japan convenience mm. convenience stores there's so much structure you know your taxes are clearly being put to good use sometimes so like i feel like that is a great thing i prefer japan this is the reason why i'm here my purpose of coming to japan was nothing special i got married and my husband has always been here so i naturally had to join him that's why I came here. <laughs> For university, because when I moved to America at age 12, 13, I had a really hard time like fitting in and adjusting. Ever since, I just wanted to come back to Japan just because it was my, my comfort place. You know, I was born and raised here, this type of thing. So ever since then, I was like, I need to find a way back. And so I attended um, Temple University. And then from that, now I got a full-time job. And I've been at the full-time job for now a year and a half. So. Oh, that's good for yeah. you. America was a lot for me. You know, it's a hit or miss. Like, mm. it depends on like what you like, what you don't like. I just feel like the experience I had was a lot. I came to Japan because I became obsessed with Japanese culture while living in New York City. I don't know why it happened, I just know when it happened. I went to a sushi restaurant. The next day I woke up and I wanted to know everything about Japanese culture in my heart and in my head. I started teaching myself 
the Japanese language and Japanese culture. I used to tell people jokingly that I was a self-taught Japanologist. <laughs> I mean, imagine, like, I went from 2,000 people of the population. Not only do I know everyone who lives everywhere, everyone was a, was a farmer. Ah, yeah. So yeah. I knew whose rice I was eating, I knew <laughs> whose broccoli I was eating, I knew whose apple I was eating. To America, where you're not as aware of what you're eating. Have you seen the chicken? Whose chicken is that big? Crazy, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anime, anime and manga is what started my initial infatuation with Japan. And then it developed into like a culture thing, you know, when I was reading stuff, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like the wear the little sailor uniforms. And I became more interested in what it would be like to live in Japan. As I was getting older, I was just like, I don't want to get locked down by anybody yet. I want to explore and see what it's about. I feel so cliche. No, we didn't move here for whatever reason. That's true. You acted on it, that's amazing. Exactly, yeah. So just took the leap and I'm happy I did. I feel like, you know, being raised in Japan, people ask me all the time, how was Japan? To me, it was normal. Whatever mm. happened there was normal. And America was the place that was different, the culture oh. shock and everything. But I didn't realize that until I moved to America and I experienced something different, where like America, like for example, mashed potatoes, you know what's in it, but it's not really clear as to what's in it, <laughs> if that makes sense, you know? Like, and like in Japan, like you know what you're eating and I knew whose food I was eating. When I was told in America, you can't drink the tap water, I was like, why? And then actually my, my hair fell apart, my skin fell apart. Partially like puberty, but also the water is different, the food is different. My body was just not having it. And actually when I visited America, because I visited America like two, three years ago, my skin broke out. <laughs> so from then I was like, you know what? <laughs> Not for me, okay? But I mean, similar things happen when like, you know, people who are born and raised in America come to Japan, their skin break yeah. out. So it's just all about what you're used to. Whether you're in school or you got a job, I feel like that's what's gonna really shape your experience. The people you meet, the places you go, the amount of free time you have. Did you put that on your resume, YouTuber? YouTuber. I was baking out of my apartment as a sideline. Japanese who came from America who wanted an authentic taste. And uh, foreigners here. Uh, no, no, bread. Four pieces. Right? Not really thinking about a business, although I wanted to be a restaurant since I was young. I guess my character became famous whenever I went to a party, I'd always take it there. Independently, three Japanese friends out of the blue offered me one million yen. A fourth friend found the actual spot for me, so they sort of pushed me into it. I paid them back within one year. I was never really beholden to anybody, and I've been making money since day one. Everything you read about conventional wisdom about opening a business, I've never done. Everybody says the three most important things, location, location, location. But I got this place just by chance. I didn't pick it, somebody, somebody found them for me. I never figured out how much anything cost. I never did any of that research at all. I guess I was here seven years and I wanted to give something back to the Japanese. I saw how much uh, the case cost in Japanese bakeries. So I said to myself, I'm gonna make something bigger for about the same price, giving myself something back. Now, what is it, Carrie, I think it's 400. When I first started, it was 300. And that was 37 years ago. So. <laughs> And I only raise prices because my wife's always telling me raise the prices. But I'll fight her tooth and nail generally. See, I've not even used a resume because. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, when I first came to Japan, I didn't have nothing to do. I could do hair as early as I can remember, maybe seven. I just did for myself and my family and friends, not for commercial purposes, just for helping people out. And when I came to Japan, I realized it was a necessity. It was one of the missing things I was affected. I'm the kind of person that loves to change my hair. When I learned I was coming abroad from Nigeria, oh my goodness, that hyped everything. And when I came here, I was really disappointed because there was no way to do my hair. I think the last time I did that was like freshman year in college and then COVID happened Then I started doing YouTube and then I've been on a break from university since then. Oh, that's what that so, is? So, yeah, you know, we break. were on a break. Yeah, we're on a break. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. So who knows, but... There was a, a situation that really touched me. I finished doing this lady's hair. She's been in Japan for God knows how long, 25 years or so. And she was so happy. And she actually called me a hair doctor. She's like, you save lives. I'm like, I don't know. I feel when women, especially black women, look the best. You get the best out of them. I want to help people to feel themselves the way they always have back home. That is one reason I put my best into everything I do. So you can see it in the styles that I reproduce. You can see the love, the passion. Like actually she has the neatest braid pattern I've ever seen in my life. When I came to get them taken out, I actually redid one on the side and she was like, what is this? <laughs> I, I don't want to call myself a perfectionist, mm. but I do appreciate the fact that people walk out of here feeling satisfied and happy if you live here and you're not happy then 
don't leave. <laughs> you know, that is what it means. I actually have a little bit of educational background. I have been working in schools for like almost 10 years now. So I'm kind of in my comfort zone living here and working as a teacher. I know a lot of people don't always enjoy working as an English teacher here in Japan, but I quite enjoy it. I'm in my zone basically. There are some setbacks, you know, like loneliness because I'm the only foreigner at my school. It's hard to kind of like build bonds. Generally, everyone's really nice at my school. I'm quite lucky and it's very rewarding when, you know, you can communicate with the children at school and they come and make jokes and call me cute and stuff like that it's really super sweet and sometimes they bring me little gifts when they leave they write me letters and it's really touching so I don't feel like like I'm needing anything else rather than YouTube that's it <laughs> does that sound like a plug <laughs> follow me what is your experience mm -hmm. being a black woman in Japan? What is it like being black in Japan? Nothing negative. For me personally, it's been a good experience, I would say. My overall experience has been, for the most part, great, <laughs> to be honest. It's very fascinating because when I'm in Ghana, people think I'm full Japanese. They don't even think I have an ounce of black in me. And I feel like that's the same thing that happens in Japan. They think I'm full black. I was considered as an American than being black in Japan. So when I speak to them in Japanese, sometimes they respond in English. They're like, you're not supposed to be able to speak Japanese. <laughs> then they're like, oh, Nihongo is so this now. I'm like, oh yeah, my mom's Japanese. They're like, oh. I haven't seen anything negative. I mean, this is my home. In the past, I've been president, vice president, and treasurer of JAFA, Japan Afro-American Friendship Association. Our purposes was to learn from the Japanese and teach the Japanese about black culture. Maybe we're teaching little by little but they're learning black people are not bad even if it's on a small scale sometimes black americans they were contacting me talking about how racist japan is i explained to people that that's just important racism japanese don't know about the racism i've actually had the concept or thought of being a black woman in japan when i came back to japan five years ago because i learned about black in america ah. like in japan i've never experienced racism openly i feel like if japanese people were to show it it's usually passive but personally Personally, I've not had a really bad experience. Yeah. Yeah. Like people say, oh, Japanese are kind of sort of racist, but I haven't really I seen haven't. that part of it. Me neither. I've been here 13 years. I guess maybe I don't take the train that much. <laughs> <laughs> I drive everywhere. <laughs> so I haven't really come in contact with such reactions from people mm. as other people would say. I haven't really had any specific really bad racist moments. I have to tell people, even if you think it's racist, even if it seems racist to you, I know there's nobody here who would kill me if they knew they can get away with it. And I know they people like that in the States. We kind of get lumped together as foreigners. It's just Japanese and other than Japanese and I, that's what I fall in. My parents did the same thing and they said the only time they were considered American was in Japan and not in America. In America, you're America. something else American. My parents coming from America, they felt liberated by that concept. And because of that, they didn't teach my brother and I about black. So I was actually upset at my parents for not teaching me that when I moved to America because it seemed like such a duh thing to everyone. But then they told me later on, like it's not about that, it's about how you are as a human being, yada yada yada. And so that's where I'm really thankful about, you know, how they raised me. So I didn't really have the concept of being a black woman in Japan until I moved to America and came back to Japan. I have had a lot of questions like, are you from America? Can you play basketball? Do you like hip hop music? And asking if my hair is real and stuff like that. I've had little things, but I don't take offense to it. Not everybody is kind of cultured and used to having black people in their lives. So I kind of let that slide. Because I came here married, so I really didn't feel the should I say loneliness mm. that some people say they feel so for me it has been a good experience of course there are times where you feel like ah oh. <laughs> I just want to go back. <laughs> but <laughs> overall, it's a beautiful place to live if you have a companion. Does that affect your like dating? Because sadly guys, this is the honest truth. I feel like there is a totem pole of race. <laughs> I hate to say this, but uh, we're not the most desired type. I'm just gonna be honest. Not saying that we aren't completely desirable because I've had people hit me up, let's, hello. At the same time, I do feel like we're not the aesthetic. Those kind of people who approach me are usually into me, what I'm serving. They're into all of this, all right? They like black people already or they're into people other than Japanese. The hustle and bustle outside can really cause depression if you don't have somebody that you can come back and chit chat with mm. or like dump all your troubles on. For me, it has been a, a beautiful experience so far. I've never really had any specific 
specific comments about my skin tone or anything like that but then again I haven't got to the level of like having kids or anything like that because a few of my friends have had comments on like the curly hair and stuff like that of their kids who are mixed and I do worry about that sometimes like if I was to have you know a relationship with a Japanese guy how would their parents react because you know I'm very accepting I don't give a crap you know my child's my child I don't want to have any contention or comments coming at my child I'll be like you know, trying to fight. <laughs> Me personally, I actually have not had any super bad experiences related to like racism here. After coming from Korea and America, bruh, Japan is peace. I like my peace. I'll link the video with my experience in Korea somewhere because that's a whole different story. So yeah, I've been here, I want, what, seven years maybe? I need to learn how to count. I was supposed to be here for one and I'm still here and I wouldn't be here this long if it wasn't comfortable. It's not comfortable. What's the word I want to use? It's not necessarily too comfortable to live. Like, it's it, it's very uncomfortable. It it's is. more like camping. It's convenient. <laughs> it's convenient and uncomfortable. I don't know how those two are yeah. together. But yeah. Like I could really use a dryer. I never used a dryer to begin with, but you know, I can feel the sentiment after I went to college. I was like, huh, this is a great thing. Why don't we have that? What is the most difficult part about being black in Japan? It's very strict. I'm obviously not fully accepted here because I'm half. As a woman, it is our hair. Bring hair products. Hair products. Oh my goodness. Just now, you're gonna struggle finding hairdressers and products. The first braids I got was like almost a year <laughs> living here. And my husband actually sought that out. He was like, oh, I know this guy in Roppongi that does hair. And I went there and I got my hair done. I could feel there is this life that you get <laughs> just by doing your hair as a black woman. I don't really speak Japanese all that way. Well, my wife and daughters, they always act embarrassed when I'm on TV <laughs> about how bad my Japanese is. Me as an American learning Japanese, when I learned one sentence perfectly, I killed that sentence. Use it all the time. Sometimes Japanese, they don't want to talk until they can speak it perfectly. But I, I know how to say, the language in this guy. The language is something I'm still struggling with. I've been here 13 years. My Japanese is still as good as a baby's. <laughs> and let him buy. So that is one reason I decided to work mainly with black people, foreigners. I cannot be struggling with people every day trying to explain what kind of hair they want to do. <laughs> I guess I found my <laughs> comfort, comfort zone. zone. Even though I came to experience this life here, I still can feel quite isolated sometimes and it is difficult being away from family which is such a contradiction. You know, I took myself out of the UK atmosphere. Sometimes I feel like people don't really understand where I'm coming from or totally what I'm about when it comes to culture and stuff like that. But um, I'm lucky I have great friends here so that's good. I have a support system. Sometimes the system and <laughs> things are just long-winded the long way around. It can be very frustrating and how things aren't so flexible, you know. One of the first things that I learned here is that you can't sub substitute food and that really annoyed oh. me. And I was like, oh, can I replace this with this or just, you know, omit this? And they're like, no. Just omit it but that's the way that life is here you have to stick to the system <laughs> because i'm not going to be flexible i put myself in this situation what can i do um best way to come to japan i would say i mean either getting a job being a creator did you hear that pewdiepie is in japan now what so i think like talent visa options are probably there jobs um, school. I have a lot of friends um, that came because of university, but Japan like lets you work while you're in school, which is great because in America, if you go on a student visa, you can't work outside of campus or internships. So like you come here, you get to model, then hopefully if you can build a good relationship with the agency or something, they'll sign you, you get a job. I feel like there's a lot of options. If you speak enough Japanese, yes, I think you can harness most jobs in this country. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but the number one way you gonna hate me for this is teaching English. English teaching jobs are literally just the best way to come and live in Japan. I think it's just the easiest visa to get. Even if that's not what you want to do, you don't have to do it forever. It's a great option for those who want to come here but they don't really know what they want to do or they don't have the necessary skills for a particular job or maybe you can't speak Japanese yet. You can come here and immerse yourself in the culture and learn the language a lot faster than you would at home. Scout out different jobs here in person which is very important because Japan is very um paper based like you got to do a lot of this stuff in person so honestly it's a really great easy way to get here you know just dip your toe in or is it a foot if you're coming from america it's like drowning actually 
as long as you're a native speaker and like or or speak spoken English see I can't even speak English anymore what's happened living in Japan as long as you've been speaking English for like over 10 years or something like that like in education then you can come here easily and get your visa of course there are other jobs and routes to take I just feel that's the easiest one first if you want a solid visa because they don't really let you down when it comes to that I always get asked how did I get my jobs in Korea and Japan here's my secret which I thought everybody knew but apparently not after you figured out what you want to do go online and look for actual job listings for the exact job you want in the exact place. Look at the qualifications and requirements and work backwards. So if they say you need a bachelor's degree, you know where you need to start. If they say they need two years experience, go out there and get that experience. Can't lie, I started really early. I started in high school because I already knew what I wanted to do. I made sure my classes, activities, and my major all aligned with the job that I actually wanted to do. And outside of school, I was building even more experience when I had the chance. So my advice to you would be just meet the requirements. You don't really even have to speak Japanese perfectly. Honestly, there are workarounds. And again, if you're someone who can't speak Japanese or you don't know what you want to do yet the English teaching route is actually a really great option or you could even come here for school if you're not immersed in Japanese it's hard to really get in I have personally experienced that with a friend who is in the Japanese company now she is so stressed out like this woman walks like a zombie because it is just too much expectation as a foreigner I, I believe the Japanese work ethics is instilled in them from childhood as early as elementary school mm. you start learning to live as a Japanese and work as a Japanese if you go to school and work <coughs> the way you go to work you see kids going to school 8 o'clock coming back 10, 10 p.m. Too. Yeah, by themselves, <laughs> and you wonder what's going on. When they actually get to the work scene, they just naturally fit in. This is what it is. Okay, we are doing it. So if you, as a foreigner, coming from outside, like they give you job, hi, everything you have to do. <laughs> no complaining. No complaining. If you are that kind of person, yes, you can easily be absorbed into the Japanese system. But if you are not, <laughs> that is why I'm doing my own thing. <laughs> So you have options. You can do your own thing, you can work for a full-on Japanese company, or maybe an international company where you might feel a little bit more comfortable. Almost any job in your country you could probably do here in Japan as well. I always get so many questions like, how can I be a blank in Japan? And I have to answer with the question, are you a blank already? If the answer is no, that's probably where you want to start. This is gonna sound harsh, but it's some information I heard from recruitment agencies in Japan. Why would a Japanese company spend a bunch of money sponsoring a visa for a foreigner who can't even speak Japanese to come here and do this particular job? Ouch. I know. But who cares? We got this. Rip the band-aid off. Let's do it. Ask yourself, what would a Japanese company benefit from by sponsoring my visa? Just make sure you stand apart and focus on what you can bring to the table. And this does not have to be super extravagant. I did not have a master's or a doctorate like other people. Shoot, I could barely spell. But I knew what I could do and I focused on those strengths. You'd be surprised what basic skills are so marketable. Like goal setting, decision making, communication, time management, problem solving. I really focused on my leadership and communication skills which sounds so basic but you'd be surprised at how many people struggle with things like this you just gotta find your thing honestly sometimes just being able to speak a global language like English and having that outside perspective on things can be enough it's actually very valuable what's the most difficult part about running your own business I always tell people that it, that it wasn't difficult but probably because my wife did all the paperwork but I didn't see any problems at all I had the shop open for eight months so I wanted to apply for a permanent visa uh, permanent resident. Mm -hmm. Permanent resident visa? Permanent resident visa. So one of the qualifications is you have to have proof of income. But I was only open up eight months. They didn't see my first income tax form yet. So they had no idea whether I was going to be a bust or not. So they called me down there. I thought they were calling me for the second interview. But they just stamped it. <laughs> I know. And then after that, I mean, my whole persona about being here changed because I mean that you have no limitations at all. From when I went to my student visa to a marriage visa, then it changed. Then I started to be able to protest. When I got to a permanent visa, I mean, there were no limitations at all. In my opinion, your two biggest hurdles are going to be the visa and the language. Coming from someone who has started a business and is currently working on a second business in Japan, it's very possible. It might not be as straightforward as you think. You might have to do a little hopscotch, but it can be done. Do you think it's possible for other black people to come to Japan and open up a business? The rules are different for foreigners here. You can almost do anything. I mean, and there's things that you might not have been able to do in the States. You might be able to do it here. No matter what you did in the States, you can start off here. Don't come here and try and do something bad as you did in the States. You can have a, a fresh start here. Almost anything's possible. Anything's possible. 
what are some tips you would give? Black people specifically, this is like very tactical advice. If you're a female, they don't like the smell of hair products. Ah, in Japan. Products. If you're a black woman living here, I have is a lifesaver. I feel like now the youth is starting to use perfumes and things yeah. that have scent. But like originally, a lot of Japanese people didn't use perfumes yeah. or things that have scent. It's actually banned in some companies. Ooh, bring deodorant. Oh God, can you bring believe that's deodorant. a deodorant? All my deodorant from home. Me too. Steel. It took us a long time to find body cream that is big enough for a family. I don't know oh. if it's they don't sweat or if they their sweat doesn't smell or it just evaporates into the air, because I never see it. I'm like, you're yeah. in a sweater. Try and have some context. Build up a community. Finding a community that exists there before going. In New York, my circle of friends were Japanese, so I made contact starting there. So there are a lot of like African, like uh, yeah. African American communities that you can find in Japan, and you can get to know those people before going, so you're not so lonely. I know people that moved to Japan during COVID, it was like, really hard because they have to now make friends but you can't go out you just have to really put yourself out there and reach out to other people and just understand that your community is going to be a lot smaller would you recommend other black people come or live in japan absolutely i would recommend it if that's what they want i would recommend black people to come and visit here just so they can get a taste of a different culture other than their own you know the, the world's wide and i'd say that no matter what country i live in i'd say explore travel because you'd learn so much more about yourself i would definitely give it a shot but i definitely think maybe come and visit first before committing to something <laughs> you know you should date a little bit before you get married <laughs> i feel like that's the same concept i would apply for living here mm -hmm. yeah to live for a short while yes <laughs> If your goal is to stay forever, I don't know. For living, oh god, that depends on a whole <laughs> on a whole different like bunch of things. If you want to live here for a long time, you have to create a world for yourself that keeps you happy. Yes. I think that is what is keeping me and my family going. Really, we don't really feel depressed. I don't know if we because we are Africans, <laughs> we are naturally resilient to many things. <laughs> I don't know. One thing I would advise is just make sure you have an open mind. America is not Japan. Not every black people can take it or not every foreigners can take it. Because I have friends that I'm like, oh, you definitely cannot live in Japan. You know, like you just would not mesh well with the country. You wouldn't like it. You know, you'd have a lot of problems. But I have other friends that like, they rather don't fit it in America. Depends where you're from then as well. Because I know people in America be struggling like with the guns and getting shot and like it's not safe and there's so much racism and there's not much race. Like, people don't know about black people here really one example is like a lot of people here complain about being stared on on the train and i'm like duh 98 percent of the people here are japanese so they've never seen anyone like you i mean i'd much rather get looked at than shot i wouldn't even like that's not even a conversation <laughs> you know what i mean in america i could get shot right well i mean in the uk we don't have that we have stabbings but you know <laughs> happily take a stare than a bullet <laughs> like happily Happily. People get depressed for the most. For me, it's very simple solution. But for many people, it's like, oh my goodness, how do I deal with this? How do I deal with that? Even the Japanese themselves are like that. So if you fall in that category, <laughs> you are not alone. If your goal is to live in Japan for a long time, you have to create your world of happiness. I feel like a lot of people that come to Japan, it's some type of like fascination with the country that draws them. Like maybe anime or maybe the sushi, ramen, or just a trend. You know, like it's like me wanting to go to Korea because K-pop. It's not an easy place to live in, but you can make it work. I feel like if something draws you to Japan, like you'll definitely have a great experience, but it depends on the type of person and what they're used to. Look at Japan from a different lens than every other person and try to make it your place. Then you can be fine. But I definitely don't think there's like a blocker that stops African Americans from living here. I would just have an open mind to come here just to see what it's like, you know, so we'll be waiting. <laughs> <laughs> So in my opinion, you're gonna enjoy it, if it's something you enjoy. Hello everyone, I hope you enjoyed this interview. I think if you're thinking about coming to Japan, definitely like try and visit and experience it. There's no harm in doing that. If you do come and you enjoy it, you can stay. You know, there's good people like Sunday that can give you guys advice. So, you know, 
come and enjoy Japan and hopefully you have a great time. Follow me on Instagram at uh, TiffBridgeX. I'm open for any questions if you had any other questions. But I'm also starting a podcast called Batan Touch Tokyo. Starting out with you know my life being born and raised in Japan, living in America, and other people who've experienced the same thing in different formats. And I'm also planning on teaching Japanese soon. So if you want to learn, then I'm the first one to contact. Bro, sign me up. <laughs> yeah, I would really love it if you guys could check me out on YouTube. Um, my name is Corny Co on YouTube. And there I like to do vlogs around Japan, traveling, eating a lot. <laughs> I like to react to usually Japanese like Netflix content. And a big fan favorite is the story times of me dating in Japan. So check out that mess too. And come over and say hello. It's me here, Hilda. So you can find me on Instagram at Ijilala Styles. My YouTube is uh, Ijilala Tokyo. God. Just type that and you will find me and see me do videos on how I do this exactly. So subscribe and follow. And looking forward to meeting you. <laughs> and when you're in Tokyo, make sure you stop by Kyle's Good Finds. This bakery is amazing. These pieces are huge. Oh, is that raisins in the bottom? Yeah, yeah. Oh, snap. And if you call in advance, he can make a lot of different sweets for you. And suddenly you have to rush out to buy something and you forgot that your wig is not on. I hate the fact that you look so pretty and you come home and you take it take out. Take it off? Like, oh, no, I'm a boy. <laughs> Me, personally, I'm... Sorry. <laughs> Oh, she's also a sick girl. Autoimmune buddies. Yes. Is this like a YouTuber black thing? Like, what is happening? I know what it is. Whoever is up there was like, we need a humble. <laughs> I, I took my wife home after we were married. I'm driving down the street. He's my cousin. He's my cousin. I have two theories. I have a flat butt and I have an autoimmune condition so I can stay humble. Otherwise, how long have you been in Japan? Oh, that one. <laughs> Every now and then, like an acne attack. Like, oh, you think you're to cute? Exactly, exactly. I came and met my wife here. She, she said she never met a foreigner who could use chopsticks as well as me. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, I thought you meant you traveled too. I was like, yay. <laughs> <laughs> is there gonna be some fight with a random electrician on a Saturday morning? Like, you don't have to worry about those things, you know? Did you get in a fight with an electrician? <laughs> no, in Ghana, you get in fights with the most random people that should be doing the most basic tasks, but it just doesn't happen.